Warning, this video contains graphic scenes of violence. Cell phone video captured by a government soldier shows military troops as they opened fire on men and women from the province of Kasai in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The gunfire lasts 30 seconds. One soldier indicates the people were not holding guns. The government initially denied the video's authenticity, but then arrested seven soldiers and charged them with murder and improperly disposing of weapons. Thirteen people were confirmed killed. Human rights groups said the footage reveals a government-sponsored massacre and that it could be used as evidence of crimes against humanity. As the Democratic Republic of Congo experiences one of its most violent periods in nearly two decades, we went to Kasai to investigate. We met a government soldier who goes on the record to talk about crimes against thousands of Congolese. Même tout ce que les militaires ont fait, ils ont eu l'ordre de les arrêter. Worried he'll be killed for participating in this interview, we've concealed his identity. Ils ont tué. Il y a des tueries, Monsieur le gouvernement. Our story begins with Diodone, a bricklayer. Dibi di mouvement comme une ans, comme un jour, comme un centre ville, me bat le perdi qui a comme un banana banya, bakafu, bakafu bou, ou comme par le vingt dix sept ans. Diodone is one of thousands of people who joins an uprising against the government in the province of Kasai in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The protest movement was named after Kamina Nasapu, a traditional chief who got in a dispute with the government over his claim to power. Government officials were concerned Kamina Nasapu would not support the ruling party and refused to acknowledge his chiefdom. He created the militia for his security. On August 11th, 2016, the authorities gave the chief, Kamina Nasapu, 24 hours to surrender to the police. The chief dismissed this ultimatum, and the next day, the army attacked his home and killed him. But the chief's murder only ignited a deeply rooted anger against the government. People joined up from all over Kasai, and soon Diodone was in charge of 200 men and women. In the late 1990s, an estimated 5 million people died in Congo, the bloodiest conflict since World War II. The fighting never really stopped. In the East, roughly 120 armed groups still operate, a number that has been increasing over the last couple of years. Many blame the rising insecurity on President Joseph Kabila, who has refused to stand down, despite the end of his second and final term as president in 2016. Throughout the country, any attempt to challenge him is being crushed. In the last three years, at least 300 demonstrators have been shot dead by security forces. To Kasai, President Kabila sent his most brutal troops. <laughs> Diodone saw the aftermath of one of these massacres when the army destroyed the camp where he and his group thought they were safe. The United Nations Peacekeeping Mission led an investigation in the area and found 90 mass graves in the region. In Naganza, a town on the outskirts of Kananga, a local NGO claims the army killed 3,500 civilians in just three days. Brutality persists throughout the country at the hands of the government. Because we're in the night, we're in the night. 
dans leur case, qu'il n'y avait personne qui sortait, même l'enfant, même une femme, même l'homme. Et j'ai beaucoup les régler. Parce que c'est ma, c'est ma famille, c'est mes frères du sang. Je parle même la langue avec eux. Nous avons même coutume. Kamwina and Asapu militants have been responsible for horrific crimes too, killing an unknown number of policemen, soldiers, and civilians. Thousands of child soldiers were coerced into joining the militia, some as young as five years old, and many of them young girls. It is possible the children did not commit the murder they claim, but merely witnessed them due to the nature of trauma. Fighting between government forces and the Komuna Nasapu movement displaced 1.4 million people in 2017. Many of the displaced spent months homeless, living in forests and fields with little to eat. UNICEF estimates 450,000 children are acutely malnourished. Ils n'avaient même pas accès aux soins médicaux, ni à des nourritures, alors même à l'eau potable, c'était un peu difficile. Et surtout quand je vois une maman qui m'arrive avec un enfant, avec un état critique, avec une malnutrition aiguë sévère, ça me fait très mal. Ça me fait très mal. Vite, tu me dis que moi, tu me tambois, on doit toi ça, tu te trouves que toi, que tu es moi, tu vas te dire là, nous t'as moi, tu vas te dire, nous t'as moi, 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 nous t'as As fighting is subsiding in Kasai, hundreds of thousands of displaced people have returned to their homes. Many have found their properties in ruins and their family members dead. Diodone left the militia in July. He went back to his work as a bricklayer. President Kabila is facing mounting pressure from the international community to organize free and fair elections by the end of the year. You can organize elections whenever you want. You can organize them uh, today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow. But what's more important is what happens after election. Do you have chaos? Or do you have stability, relative stability, in order for the country to go forward? <laughs> President Kabila has been in power for over 17 years. In March, Congo rejected help from the international community to fund elections, leading many to fear that they may still not be held this year, pushing Congo to the brink of what could be yet another war. <laughs> 